Hello Chief Architect viewers, this is Renee Rabbit of Rabbit Design. I'm going to go over something that I get asked about constantly. I'm, you know, I do a lot of training videos for people. I actually have a service where I'm drafting per, for people while I'm training. Uh, so I do full speed drafting while I'm describing what I'm doing so you can go and review afterwards. Um, instead of one-on-one -on -one training where I'm doing a screen sharing, which is another service I offer, um, the drafting tra training is a little bit different in that I'm not slowing down. I'm going at my full speed and then I'm going to describe what I'm doing. And that allows you to go review that video over and over and over again as you need to. But it also pushes your project forward at a full speed drafting production speed level drafting. Uh, so anyways, to get into this a little bit further, um, I wanted to show a filing system that I've been using for years now and, and have developed over the years. Uh, and this is for kind of best filing practices. And so we're in a job file right now. I've got a folder that's called Af Active Projects. Um, this is my particular client's name. And then I've got a particular, uh, you know, a job name that I've associated with it. Now I can get a little bit more granular with the job name titles. Um, but for this particular case, it's it's a really simple job name. And then within this folder, we've got some very basic things. One is backups. Backups are when I want uh, my client to review that file um, in Chief Architect, I'm going to go underneath the file section, backup entire plan. And then I'm going to create a zip from that entire plan so that uh, then I store it in this backup. And I can either share this folder with him on, on a cloud source or I can email that backup direct to my client. Uh, I'm going to skip CAD because we're going to go over that in a second, but contracts is self-explanatory. Invoicing is self-explanatory. Photos, this is where I'm going to keep job-related photos. When I do takeoffs of a property, I'm going to take a bunch of photos in case I missed anything in my takeoffs because I'm usually only on site for an hour to three hours doing split-level homes. I have a very fast method of doing takeoffs. Um, then we've got plans. This is where I'm going to place my PDFs, my versioning. And then we've got renderings. Now, under CAD, this is my working drafting folder. And so I received something from the client. I want all assets to be in this folder. Anything I've received, anything that could possibly be placed in plan or PDF, I'm going to put in this folder. And the reason being is that if I'm on a, you know, a, a network share with someone that is also going to be working alongside of me you know, with these files, I want to make sure that all the assets live here because when I share my folder with someone else and say we've got this image number two built into a plan file, what happens is when I open up that plan file, Chief is going to reference not only this image number two name, but it's also going to reference the file structure here. And the person I might be sharing with absolutely does not have the same file structure. So it's going to come up with an error in chief saying it's missing these images if they were in some other folder other than the active plan. So that's why I put all assets into the active plan. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and, and just as an example, I'm working on an out-of-the-box template, something I never thought I'd be doing because it's, you know, it's I've, I've come so much further than this. But just as an example, let's start in an out-of-the-box template. I'm just going to build a quick little house here. We're just going to make a box. No big deal. I'm not even going to use hotkeys so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just making some interior walls. We could have done this in the space planning app, which is, you know, really a, an incredible app. And... Let's just build a roof as well. Excuse me. Build roof, automatic roofs, not rebuild roofs. Select OK. Maybe we'll make this a gable. Sure. So here we go. I've built a plan out. Now, I'm going to make something a little bit different than the working set and the working plan view set in that I'm going to make a new layer set and we're going to call it, let's just go to our default sets and I'm going to make a new anno set as well and I'm going to call this e plan for existing plan and under e plan under the layer set I'm going to well, let's just pick any other thing and we're going to define it and we're going to copy that set it doesn't really matter I'm going to call this the e plan layer set why not and press OK, press OK. Now I'm in that active Anno set. I'm going to switch that active Anno set, I should say. Excuse me. Active Anno set. There we go. And 
with that checked, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to go ahead and not display all of them. I'm going to change the line weight to, I don't know, let's call it 20. And then I'm going to make this guy dash. What I'm doing here is I'm making an existing plan uh, overlay or underlay. It depends on how you want to want to set it up and I'm going to make it gray. There we go. Now the only thing I want on are walls. So let's just grab all these walls. Select all these. We're going to display them. The only thing I'm going to uncheck is going to be the main layer only section. Okay. And actually I'm, I'm probably going to turn off layers as well. There we go. So I've got walls. I want windows. I'm going to turn those on. I want doors. I'm going to turn those on. And we didn't place any windows and doors, so let's go ahead and grab a tool and do that. Doesn't really matter. This is a fake plan. I'm going to show some windows and doors. Just giving examples. And I could show the roof lines as well. Sure, why not? Where's our roof plane? Oh, right in the middle there. Okay, so now I've got an E plan. I'm going to save this. <clears throat> save as, and I'm going to navigate <clears throat> to that active folder. Excuse me. Under this received, it's also just going to be as built. But we can, I'm going to date this. Actually, I don't need to date this. Excuse me. I'm going to name this, and we're in Columbia, and we're going to call it AB. Let's go all caps on that. Okay, so Columbia AB, now I'm going to save it again, and this time I'm going to call it new. <clears throat> so under new, and we're going to change to, uh, let's change to a different plan view. You know what, they've got autosave on out of the box, which is silly. It shouldn't be on autosave. I want that working layer set. Um, now I want to switch to, let's see, let's save that. Now I want to switch to my ePlan Anno set. And we're going to save this view as ePlan for clarity. And actually I'm going to go ahead and save this back. I'm going to go back to this AB because we fixed that little detail. And kick this back again to the new. Okay, so we're in our active Columbia new plan, and when I switch to my working plan view, it should go, oh, no, it didn't do it. It should switch to my working layer set. Anyways, um, so when I kick on my reference display set and then change my floor reference, I'm going to open up my Columbia AB under freezing Columbia CAD. Columbia AB is going to be on and we're going to go to the ePlan layer set that I just did and I'm going to move it down a layer. And so now if I delete this wall, we're going to see, look at that, we've got an as built underneath this. So clear and concise way of, of having that as built underneath. I'm going to go ahead and save this and control W out, close that active window. There we go. I'm going to alt tab over to my Windows Explorer. And so if I've got a new working drafting session, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my job, which is Columbia. I'm going to go into CAD and I'm going to take the last session. I'm going to control C to copy it, control V to paste it, and I'm going to rename this. And here's what I'm going to rename it. I'm going to name it 200311 and whatever I want. doesn't matter. Now I've effectively you know, maintained my backup, right? This is a previous iteration. Here's my new iteration. This is where I'm going to start working from. I'm not going to use that that dialog that we get, you know, as we are open recent files. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come straight to the folder and I'm going to open a, up straight from that. Let's see. Let's close this out. Sure, we'll save that. Uh, yeah. No. Switch back. Alt-Tab. And so I'm in my new working session. I want to work in this Columbia plan. It's going to link that Columbia AB, but that Columbia AB is going to be the file from my new working session. It's not going to be the original. That original is going to stay intact. 
So we've effectively made a backup and started a new working session. So now if I make some new modification, like delete these other walls and save this for the day, and not only that, I'm going to print. And typically I would set up a layout file to print. So I had a, you know, a, a print server all set up with my logos, all that stuff. But I'm going to print, and the location I'm going to print at, excuse me, I've got the wrong job here. We've got sub four freezing. I'm going to throw this in plans, and what I'm going to name it is today's date, or that same drafting date, 11 working session. There we go. And so the point of all this is that when I come in here and I get a client and they're asking me that, you know, we like this previous design and it's labeled DRVB, which is design review B or DRVC. Can we revert back to that design? I know we've done seven more designs since then, but I'd like to go back to that design. It's going to be really easy for me to go in and say, which, which file name was that? And they're going to say it's the 200311 working session. And all I would need to do is go into CAD. And maybe I've got 20 other folders in here. But all I need to do is find that same folder. And I can, I can pick up right where I left off from that design iteration. It's a perfect way of backing up your files, keeping stepped configurations, right? So that I have a, a resource and a reference. If we want to get even more into this, even more granular, you can set up your invoicing the same way. You can set up your bookkeeping or your time tracking based the same way. You can even go into your time log and edit your time log to make those same notes. Under tools, under time tracker, let's stop time logging for a second. Yes, I know. We're going to look at that time tracker, view that time log, and what we can look at here is we can say, you know, it's already dated. We know it's already dated, but we can make some reference to, you know, PDF, yada, yada, yada. It will remain in notes. Little typo there, no big deal. But you can see it's in my notes now. Now I've got a time tracking log of this. I've got a, a CAD folder full of this design iteration. I've got a PDF for reference for this design iteration. It's foolproof, it's bulletproof. If I wanna go share this with you know someone else, the first thing that they're gonna do, if I share this file and they wanna start a new working session, and they know this, everybody I work with knows this, is that they're gonna take this working session, they're gonna control C, and actually we're gonna to have to close this out to be able to do it, which is a big part of this. You know, you need to be able to back out of those files. But now we've closed that out, I'm gonna control C, control V, start my new working session, you know, whatever you want to call it, a different username. And there we go. And they're going to start from here. Now I know that, you know, no conflicted copies. We know exactly where everything is and how to reference everything. So I hope this helps some people. I hope this video really, you know, gives you a clear working path for, for your workflow, how you should be working as a drafter and chief architect.